Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab, closing out the last day of the month and heading into February. Nothing like the February two years ago. It's been a very mild winter, at least in our part of the country. The hot spot around the globe is Carnarvon, Australia, 116 degrees, as southeasterly desert winds affect the coastal northwest. Carnarvon, Australia was the site of a NASA tracking station in the 1960s that supported the Apollo space program. And the world's cold spot once again, Deliunk here with minus 64. And as usual, not really a whole lot to see around that part of Siberia. So what do we see in our part of the country? Well, we are in between weather systems, high pressure covering much of the country. We've got one outgoing coastal system off of the North Carolina coast, a very weak Alberta clipper heading into Minnesota and South Dakota. A rather strong weather system on the Oregon and northwestern California coast. Those rain bands starting to move into places like Fort Bragg, Arcata, and Ukiah. But before we take a look at that, let's go around the country. The northeastern U.S., they've been under that just nonstop perpetual cold air advection. Today, however, ridging starting to build into the area. So the winds have come down. However, we've got a lot of residual moisture hanging around in the lower levels. So we've got stratus and stratocumulus from Maine all the way to Indiana and Illinois. Some breaks, though, moving into the State College area. The southeastern U.S. looking pretty good, but we do have that cold advection in the Carolinas. Low pressure offshore, so we've got a northerly wind component as you go out to the west. Elsewhere, dry. And we can see that dry continental air has wrapped across much of the southeastern coastal region. The south-central U.S. starting to come under southerly flow. The ridge axis from Arkansas into Ohio, so we've got the wind flow out of the south from Little Rock to Oklahoma City and all the way out towards Midland. But there you can see the warm air advection, the moisture advection, coming in from the western Gulf and from Mexico as well. A couple waves back in here across New Mexico and the El Paso area. There's one vortex right there, southeast of El Paso, and another one near Raton, New Mexico. The GFS 500 millibar heights and vorticity do show a vort max in northeastern New Mexico, shortwave through the eastern part of the state, and another vort max just east of El Paso. Over the next 24 hours, those disturbances will gradually move to the northeast and into western Kansas and the Panhandles tonight. We are lacking moisture, so we're not expecting much out of these short waves, but they will continue progressing into the Kansas City area for tomorrow night, and we get this little low-pressure area aloft, shearing out around Goodland, Kansas, as the main trough makes its way onshore. And not much going on in the northern plains, just a little deformation zone right through here. You can see the flow converging in Montana and then spreading out across the Dakotas and the Bitterroots. In the southwestern U.S., yeah, we've got a lot of weather going on. We can see a vortex across southeastern Utah. The 250 millibar chart shows that a little bit better. That's that low over Utah, and that's clearly undercutting this upper level ridge across the northern Rockies. So looking at the big picture, this is 500 millibars. This is the mid-troposphere. We see that large trough on the west coast. Strong jet coming on shore near California. And over the next few days, we're going to be seeing a trough dig into the base of this large-scale trough. And you can see the appearance of a low around Las Vegas by Friday. That'll deepen further 
There it is, starting to move from the Four Corners area into the Panhandles by Saturday. That'll have a big impact on the weather in the south-central U.S. and a very blocky pattern showing up for this weekend. And the other story is this atmospheric river in California. Southerly flow with IVTs up to about 1,000. And that's really laying on the rain in California. And that'll shift down the coast overnight into Los Angeles for tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, moisture advection and warmth work their way up into the southern plains. Then as we approach the weekend, the Rocky Mountain weather system goes pretty much south of Arizona, continued warm advection into Texas. Then as we go into late Friday and Saturday, could see another rainy pattern developing, especially in the lower Mississippi River Valley. So that's going to be Sunday, a drying trend back in behind it, and then round two for California for Sunday and Monday. So here's how it looks on the composite maps. Rains spreading into California with snow in the Sierras. We have winter storm warnings in the Sierras above 7,000 feet, 12 to 24 inches of snow expected, 36 inches near the summits. Also winter storm warnings for the mountains north and east of Los Angeles could see 18 inches in some locations. Flood watches and wind advisories throughout the Inland Empire, Thursday through Friday morning, high surf advisories, gale warnings on the coast, and then going into the San Joaquin Valley, we've got wind advisories tonight through Thursday throughout the entire valley, high wind warnings in the mountains where 60 mile an hour gusts are possible. The foothills of the northern Sierras also under flood watches tonight and Thursday. So as we head into the day Thursday, this is going to have big impacts on the Los Angeles area. You can see those snows breaking out right there in the Sierras and spreading into Nevada. We do have winter storm warnings Thursday through Friday in the Tonopah area and winter weather advisories further east, including Ely, Rachel, and even Area 51. So maybe treacherous flying for those UFOs. As the system moves into Arizona for late Thursday night into Friday, the snows spread into the Four Corners area. We do have a winter storm watch throughout much of the San Juan Mountains. Three to ten inches of snow are possible. Could see higher amounts above 10,000 feet. And the outskirts of Durango, those are also in that winter storm watch. Then as we go into Friday, things will be spreading into Texas. Rain all the way up to Oklahoma City and Wichita and lingering snow showers and rain showers back in the southern Rockies. We start to see a lot of rain as that moisture pumps northward for Friday night in a Saturday and could be a rainy pattern coming up for much of the southern U.S. for Saturday night and Sunday. There's the next round into California. This will be a little bit colder, possibly snow levels down to about 4,000 feet in the Sierras, and plenty of rain once again with that strong southerly flow. And on the east coast, another coastal weather system, much like what we have today, another weak cold air outbreak into the northern plains, and then just kind of a stagnant weather pattern with an occlusion lurking off the California coast. Time for our Arctic air update. I don't know of any places on YouTube where you can get such a thing, but this is how we track the development of Arctic air. The orange colors, that's getting down to about minus 30, minus 40, minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This is not wind chill. This is actual air temperatures. So that is a very cold air mass. And even up there, it is somewhat uncommon. And there's some more Arctic air across the Alaskan interior into Chukotka, Siberia. So... Well, starting out today, we do have extreme cold warnings from Environment Canada for Iqaluit and Pond Inlet, and some of that cold air spreading into Hudson Bay and Quebec. Those are really about the only areas that are affected in the near term. In the prairies, we have warm air temperatures from freezing up to 40 degrees, spreading up to Alberta and up to Hay River. So let's bring that into motion. We see a couple waves working down into James Bay in southern Quebec, 
bringing some of that cold air into Montreal, Toronto, and the northeastern U.S., but not any severe cold. As we go into early next week, we do see some Arctic air starting to rebuild once again from Fairbanks down to Dawson and down to Whitehorse. These are temperatures in the minus 30, minus 40 range. The pressures build to 1040 millibars, but not very much aerial extent and not very much depth. So not much impact for the prairies or the U.S. Going into midweek, another surge of cold air going down into Quebec once again. Some cold air filtering into Saskatchewan and Manitoba, but not very much push behind that. And the very last frame I have, it's going to be this frame right here, 1030 millibars. That's kind of a lackadaisical pressure, a little typical push of polar air into the north central U.S., but not any Arctic outbreaks on the horizon. In the U.S., our weather will be dominated heavily by the southern stream and the open flow from the Pacific. We have a high positive EPO pattern bringing that momentum in from the central Pacific into California, Nevada, and Arizona. In spite of the blocky pattern, we do have a progression of these waves over the next week or so. We've got the long wave trough working onshore for the weekend and a little bit of flux in the long wave pattern as we get that wave kind of work its, itself out. But you can see that strong flow coming up into New Mexico around midweek and then into Texas for Thursday and Friday next week. And the long wave pattern, it's kind of hard to tell where it is. I guess probably somewhere in here. And we have a continuation of that split flow pattern. The southern stream all the way down here, quite active, and the northern stream across Canada. And that will keep the cold air bottled up up north. And with things getting very active out there in the Pacific, we definitely need to take a look and see what's going on. So what we have out there, very wound up occlusion, 965 millibar low off of Washington. And this is going to be the new Bear Clinic development zone off of San Francisco and Los Angeles. So going into tonight, there's our new frontal system coming together on the tail end of that West Coast weather system. And another one, this is going to be next coming down the pipe for Sunday. That'll head into California in a few days. There's the remainder of that sequence. I don't have all these analyzed, but that'll take you into Friday and on into Saturday. And you can see things going downhill, very rapid development off of California for Sunday, and a lot of it coming on shore for Monday. And there's the end of that sequence. You can kind of see the storm track up there reorganizing, kind of lined up like this. So that may kind of shut down things for California and focus the storm track a little bit further north in British Columbia and southeastern Alaska. And that will conclude this edition of Forecast Lab. I do want to thank our supporters from last week, David McCannelly, LK22, and I want to thank our newest Patreon supporters, PY Geeker Fu and Michael. Thank you very much for your support. And I do appreciate that because if we can pull in enough Patreon support, I am going to add more days to this program, and maybe someday we'll be looking at a five-day-a-week program. Anyway, that's my goal. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, so I hope you have a great Wednesday evening, and we'll see you back here for another edition on Friday when we have that big California system make its way into the Great Plains. Okay, take care, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.